All right, everybody, welcome back to Train Sub World 2. This time it's going to be Clinchfield Tutorials. Uh, we are going to do the tutorials on the F7 and the SD40 for the new route Clinchfield Railroad. Uh, I was going to do try to do a service after that, but um, we just got done with the uh, points challenge with uh, the British Ace, the members stream. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I think that's more than enough for one day. So we're going to do the F. We're going to start off here with the F7 introduction, and then we are going to do the SD40, and that will be it for today. Yeah, I think that's a good. That's more than enough. So anyway, let's get in here and get started, shall we? So hopefully everybody is still having a nice saturday afternoon evening time whichever the case may be so a couple things now clinchfield the f7 is a bit peculiar you'll notice there's this one of the screens that has the pictures and all that the the loading screens there's one about the brakes for the f7 now, there's not a manual out yet for the F7, so they put that out, you know, reminding everybody to kind of how to set up the brakes. Um, so we're going to try to remember uh, that. I think there we only have two locomotives here for the tutorial, if I remember how the tutorial went. So anyway, we're going to let the game take over and talk. Welcome to Engineer Training. Here you'll be taken through the operation of a classic electromotive division F7 diesel electric locomotive. Or EMD for short. During this brief introduction, we will go through the critical locomotive controls and freight operations. When you're ready, climb aboard to get started. Okay. Oh, look, check this out. So there is. Oh. So those, there's the SD40s in the Clinchfield colors over there. Our F7's kind of got this dirty gray and yellow look to it. Take a seat in the engineer's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. Okay. The fuel pump will need to be closed to allow fuel to reach the locomotive. Fuel pump first. The engine is currently shut down and will need to be started before progressing. Press and hold the engine start button to activate it. All right. The isolation valve is currently in the start position. Use the indicated right control to set the isolation valve to the run position. Move that there. The rotor valve allows the operator to set the brake mode to match the required operation of the locomotive. For the lead locomotive of a long train, use the freight setting. For the lead locomotive of a shorter train, use the passenger setting. If the locomotive is a trailing locomotive, use the appropriate freight or passenger lap setting. If running as a light locomotive, go. the passenger setting is recommended for rapid brake response. So we're going to set this to freight. The reverser there. determines the direction of travel. We got that. The transition right. lever is used to control the flow of the electrical current to the traction motors, which is set based on the movement the locomotive is currently performing. As we are performing switching duties around a yard, we will need to set the control to series parallel shunt. Do this now by using the indicated lever. right there the unit selector is used by the engineer to specify how many locomotives are in the current lash up use the indicated lever to set the number of locomotives in this formation all right we've got two so we set that to two the generator field switch will need to be set use the indicated switch to activate the generator field now hey kai All right, right below that is the engine run. We're going to put that to on. Independent brake to release. 
For this introduction, we will be performing switching duties and handling the loading of hoppers. You are now ready. All right, so that there's that cut in, cut out valve that has to be cut in for the lead locomotive, cut out for the one behind us. So that should already be set. He makes it set. It is a bit complex. It's just going to take some time to kind of get used to setting this up. Now, of course, we know that some of the things are already set up when we. when we get into a, a uh, all right so that one's already set coasting is a method used to keeping to speed limits is important if you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of brake by moving the handle into the braking range. That does look nice though, doesn't it? Now, the other lights, there's number lights, glass light, and this one should be for the, there should be one for the headlights. There we go, right there. Look at that. That looks nice. I got to get a picture of that real quick. Uh, I got uh, the motion blur. Oh, an upload failed. What the deuces? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh. All right. Now, we're going to stop right. Oops. This yard features both manual and automatic switches. The manual All right, switches so will need to be set now, one foot before departing. Climb down now. This and is make what sure happened with Richard last time. Position. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna get out and we're gonna actually go and set that switch. I'm. Um, oh crap. The train's rolling again. Oops, a daisy. Okay. Now, this is what happened to Richard as well. Last time, he accidentally put the thing into uh, emergency brake. The hoppers are in front of us. You will need to approach them slowly to safely couple and avoid a potential derailment. All right. So now this is going to be the tricky part. If you do run into this, there's a way to reset it. But I don't remember how they said to do it. Let's see. Let's put on the independent brake first. that back on again let's do cut out and cut back in I think we have to put this in neutral too and then put this into emergency if I remember correctly
Yep, there we go. All right. There we go. Yep, reverser on and off. Uh, yeah. So, just remember that if you accidentally go into the emergency brake, that's that's how you reset it. And it's very easy to do on this. Wow. That's the second time I've done that. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to get really good with that, I think. <laughs> now, these should connect... Uh With the hoppers successfully coupled, your next task is to bring the cut of cars over to the tipple to begin the loading process. When loading hoppers, you need to keep to a slow and controlled speed to allow the loader to correctly and safely load the hoppers. Apply a small amount of power to start moving and then adjust the throttle back to the idle position once you're traveling at no more than three miles per hour. Okay. just so we can kind of watch. So this is a lot like Sandpatch grade. Uh, struggles uphill, yeah. So we have to kind of keep our speed a little bit. Uh, so this is going to be a bit like Sandpatch grade with the loading of the coal. We don't want to go too fast, but we don't want to lose too much speed either. So we're going to let this kind of coast in. We only got a half a percent down or uphill. So we should be okay. By the time this slows down a bit, we're just going to have to watch our speed. Because uh, you want as much coal. We want everything to hit about 100%, if at all possible. There we go. Look at that. All that nice, lovely coal. So that's, that's what 100% loaded looks like, I'm guessing.
Go uphill at 16 on the 25, yeah. That's a, probably about right, I can imagine. Nice job. The hoppers are now loaded. Your final task is to couple this cut of cars to the waiting train. All right, so we're going to get out here and set the switch behind us. I always, I never, because I learned my lesson the hard way, if you don't get out and manually move these, sometimes it'll it'll mess up your scenario or your training. So always... You will need to contact the dispatcher before you can leave the yard. Contact the dispatcher and ensure you're given clearance before proceeding. So we're going to go to reverse. Oops, I'm going to the wrong way. Now see, it's weird because it says basically that we got to go back where we came from, kind of. Right? But... Anyway, we're going to make sure. It shouldn't take much to get us moving here because we're going downhill, basically. Yeah, I would agree, uh, Kai. It is nice and relaxing. There's lots of... Uh, tunnels and stuff uh, although I mean look at this this is I know for a fact this is gonna look really good in the snow as well uh, yeah really nice countryside I really like these locomotives this is this is really terrific I think I was I'm really excited that they put this on console finally the the PC players of had this for quite some time, I think. So, uh, yeah, really good, really good job, I think. Yeah, I don't think we really need the uh, cab light on here. Oh, that was the right way to go. Somehow it... Huh, interesting. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, now we're finally starting to slow down here a bit. Alright, so, which, where are we going to now?
going to this. Okay. Oh, thank you. It would be faster if it's... Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to... You know, no stress. We're not in any, any hurries. If we make a mistake, we're going to try to figure out how to fix it. If at all possible. So, you know, that's just how... That's how we do it here. We're going to connect to these things and then we'll be heading over to the SD40 and get that done and then we'll be wrapping it up for the day. We'll kind of let the speed kind of bleed off here. But yeah, those. this is all how it looks 100%. That's when you know you've got your full load of coal, and plus the the hopper will, the the coal loader will stop, and then you move on to your next one. So, yeah, a little bit different than what we see usually on the uh, sand patch grade. Oh, you're back. I'm almost done with the uh, the F7 tutorial there, Josh. We're just coupling up to these uh, cars here, and then uh, we'll head over to the SD40. Now I have run around a little bit already and look looking for the collectibles and it I have to say it's a really nice route just running around looking for for the stuff that we got to do uh yeah really really well done I think With the hoppers now coupled you can uncouple the locomotive from the train Use the cut bar on the rear hopper to uncouple the hoppers from this locomotive All right, we're gonna climb down and look for this ourselves. We're not gonna. It says uncouple the vehicles. There's a bar. Let's go around the other side and see if it's on that side. Should be like a bar. This is it. The coupler locked. We're gonna unlock it. There we go. Good job. That is all of the tasks that have been assigned to you for now. Bring the locomotive back. To no, the Clinchfield's near. Uh, no, Florida. No, it's up, uh, up in. Um, it's in a different location. No, they used to run. They they were bought out by a locomotive or a railroad that did end up running to Florida, the Sea Coast Line or something like that, if I remember correctly. They were talking about the history of the railroad there. All right, let's make sure we don't have any switches that need to be changed along the way here. It doesn't look like it. We're gonna stop right kind of where we started from.
No, I think this was like in parts of Virginia. Basically. Yeah, Virginia. Uh, I think... Is it Norfolk Southern now runs it or CSX? I think it's Norfolk Southern. Now runs part of the line. A lot of this is... Because uh, here in America, a lot of the politicians have gone against the coal industry. Uh, there, a lot of this probably no longer exists. Uh, a lot of these coal towns are, are now gone. Uh, yeah, CSX does, yeah. But yeah, they probably don't operate uh, coal loading like they used to on this route. There might be a few coal mines left open, but on average, most of the coal mines have now been shut down due to legislation. A lot of it has to do with the impact on the environment. And I can understand that. There was a movie, I think, that showed not just the environmental impact about the coal towns, you know, people working in the coal mines, but the the health of the people living in the area in general was it was just really uh it was sad they weren't taking one side or the other over it it was just kind of trying to show the story of the coal towns and, and the people who lived there and worked there and everything uh it was yeah it was a really kind of an interesting uh, documentary but uh yeah a lot of people had a lot of illnesses over the years uh, because of it. All right, we're going to stop here, and then that will be part one done. So, yeah, about half an hour or so. Uh, they didn't... Uh, didn't they do, like, a past version? Uh, I don't... I... Are you talking about, uh... I'm not sure, to be honest, Kai. I couldn't say for sure. If you're talking about for Train Sim World, I don't know what the deal is on that. I know they had a Clinchfield line uh, for some time uh, on for the PC players. All right, moving into our parking spot here. This hasn't been too bad. We had a few hiccups, but we, we worked through them. It's okay. There Good we work. go. That's fine. That concludes all of the basics of operating this locomotive. They did like an old version. It may be so. There we go. There we go. Got our first gold. All right. All right, let's move over to the SD40 now. Don't think the F7 runs on there anymore. Uh... A lot of the F7s, uh, the streamlined locomotives from the um, from the that were made by EMD Electric Motor Division. Now you see a lot of them at museums. Uh, some of them go specifically to uh, some museums for like a, a get together. Uh, if you look at my Flickr page, uh, there was a streamline. Streamline locomotive get together at the North Carolina uh, Railway Museum. Uh, so you see a lot of those. I mean, these are very popular. I think a lot of railroad fans love the look of the F7s. Uh, you know, it's just a classic railroad look. You know, uh, they were very far ahead of their time, I think, and they only improved and then they, you know, uh, more and more diesel electric power took over and now you have these diesel hybrids that a lot of the uh, railroads Welcome use now Welcome to engineer too. training. Here you'll be taken through the operation of an electromotive division SD40 diesel electric locomotive. 
During this brief introduction, we will go through the critical locomotive controls and refueling of the locomotive. When you're ready, climb oh. aboard to get started. We're going to put some gas in there too. All right. Take a seat in the engineer's position. This is where you'll now, be spending most of your time. Now it's interesting. It says press Y. Sit in any seat available, but you got to sit in the engineer seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The main circuit breaker is used to allow power to the locomotive. Use the indicated control to set it to the closed position. That's that right there. Let's put the so you can see it a little bit better. There's the that's what we're getting ready to close up. That switch right the there. The will first need to be primed to start the locomotive. Use the indicated switch and hold it in the prime position for 10 seconds. Now that the engine has been primed, it's time to start it up. Using the same switch as before, move it into the start position and hold it there for 5 seconds to start the engine. With the engine now running, set the isolation switch to the run position. Nice work. The locomotive is now ready for operation. This locomotive has three brake systems. The automatic brake controls the brakes on the locomotive and all the cars in the consist. The independent brake is used to control only the locomotive's brakes and is primarily used when running light. The dynamic brake is used to help control the train's speed when operating on mainline and branchline grades. As we are running light loco, we will use the independent brake to control our speed. Now move the automatic brake lever into the release position. The cutoff valve will need to be set to the required position. Do this now by moving the cutoff valve and setting it to freight. The MU2A valve must also be set up to the required position. Move the indicated switch and set it to lead or dead. That way. Activate the auxiliary systems as indicated. Generator engine on. Generators on. And most importantly, our fuel pump is on. We're putting the reverser handle in. The reverser is used to determine the direction of travel. Yes, we know that. The selector lever allows you to move between power and dynamic braking modes. The B setting allows the throttle handle to control the dynamic brake, and the 1 setting allows it to apply power. Set the selector. For this introduction, we will be moving this locomotive over to the fuel racks to refuel. Yay, us. This yard features manual switches which will need to be set on foot before departing. Climb down now and make sure the switches right. are set to the correct positions. There we go. Manual switches. I love manual switches. It's so much fun. Ooh, we're going to go over the... Uh... Oh, I've been here. So this is where we are on the map, for those of you who don't know for sure. That's, we're all the way at the bottom here, in this yard, right here. There we go. This is kind of everybody sees where we're at. This locomotive is now ready for service. Use the <laughs> throttle and apply a small amount of power to get moving. Well, I will once I'm back there at the locomotive. <laughs> some of them run occasionally as backup trains, and sometimes they just run normal freight services, but the SD40 still runs all the time. Yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, I, I think a lot of F7s, yeah, they may be in use in some places, but I've seen them mostly at uh, the uh, at museums for, you know, if there's a collection or, a, you know, some kind of a get-together sort of thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we got to change our brake. Oops. To I think he said we were going to use the independent brake. Or did he say we were going to use the other one? Ooh, wow, I didn't... Oh, ooh. Keeping to speed speeding on the... is important. If you begin speeding, apply a small amount of brake by moving the handle into the braking range. We've got only got this one locomotive. The refueling point is behind us. Make sure that the switches are set to the correct position and then reverse the locomotive to the fuel racks. All right, so we're going to go out here and get these. Yeah, they might have had to switch them up because of the... Uh, since Clinchfield doesn't technically run anymore is, is a locomotive line on its own. So CSX probably has to, they probably have to put the CSX logo on there, on those locomotives. Do, 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 do. One more back here. Oh, stop at location. Okay, that's the fuel point back there. I thought it was another switch. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so let's get back here and get the cab and... All right, now, before we move, what I want to try to do is let's see where our fuel I think the fuel line is on this side so let's just have a look real quick I think the tank is right yeah right there so there's our okay so there should be one on the other side that's that's got the same yep okay so either way we know where the fuel caps are Now the interesting thing is, is that these look like headlights, but it's hard to tell. There's no additional uh, ditch lights. I noticed that too.
Uh, S7s look horrible in CSX livery. Most of America is freight lines. Yeah, the only... Uh, now, it used to be that each railroad... So, for Clinchfield, for instance, they had freight and passenger. And then, because they couldn't agree on prices and everything, they had to... Basically, they nationalized... The government runs Amtrak here in America. It's a government-run railroad. Uh, but it has not really been profitable. It has, I mean, in some ways it is, but there's there's a lot of infrastructure problems with the uh, Amtrak lines across America. So yeah. All right, we're gonna try to get this spot on, or as close to spot on as possible. That'll do. With the locomotive now positioned next to the fuel rack, you will need to prepare the locomotive for refueling. To begin, open the fuel cap to allow access to the locomotive's fuel tank. Now take hold of the fuel hose. With wow. the hose now inserted into the tank, you can... Now, it should give us an indication of, yeah, see there's the, so we're going to fill it all the way up. So we should get a thing when it says that it's reached the max. Okay, well, I guess I think that's it. We should be at the max. Nice work. The locomotive okay. is now fully fueled and ready for service. Return the hose back to the fuel rack and reattach the fuel cap to finish the job. Good work. That concludes all of the basics of operating and refueling this locomotive. There we go. Easy peasy. Why not fill up ice with that dome? <laughs> yeah, with with, this, with some fuel. Yeah. All right. There we are. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, two gold. So, yeah, there we go. And I got a thing done, too. Uh, so, anyway, that's going to be it for today. Uh, thanks, Josh and Kai and whoever my other viewer might be. Uh, thank you for coming in, and I will see you guys next week. Next Friday, for sure, with another Train Sim World 2 stream. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, I'll see you guys soon.